Patrick Mahomes on the Bears, Josh Allen on the Browns, Aaron Rodgers on the 49ers, and Jamarcus Russell and Tim Tebow back in the NFL? Wait, that can't be right. Today, we're gonna look at the biggest what-if scenarios in NFL history. Basically, I broke this down into three different categories. Category A, the draft do-over. This is when a team just flat out took the wrong guy. Like the Bears taking Trubisky instead of Mahomes, or the Browns taking Baker over Josh Allen. And while we're in Cleveland, Corey Coleman over Tyree Kill. And then there's the Texans taking Clowney over Aaron Donald, or even going way back to 2005, the 49ers passing on Aaron Rodgers for Alex Smith. This category is me using hindsight to help these teams make good decisions. Category B, the one hit wonders. This one is just seeing what would happen if guys we thought were really good actually were. Like for example, Jamarcus Russell isn't gonna watch blank game tapes and instead actually try. Or RG3 never gets hurt in Washington and plays a full career. And then there's Calvin Johnson, who played on some of the worst teams in NFL history. So I thought, what if he actually got to play with some real talent around him? Or arguably the biggest fluke in NFL history, Tim Tebow. Yep, this one's just for the meme. I wanna see what if he actually played in 2023. I mean, it can't be worse than Russ. And this last category I'm calling the multiverse. Basically in this one, Steve Buscemi over here actually got the Jets to tank properly, and they got the number one pick to draft Trevor Lawrence. Man, I hate being a Jets fan sometimes. Then there's the Bengals taking arguably the best player in the 2020 draft, Justin Jefferson over Joe Burrow. And same idea a year later, the Jags take Micah Parsons. Basically, when I was looking at these what ifs, making even small draft changes creates ripple effects since guys are off the board. The point here is really just looking at a different version of the NFL where teams pick guys with the knowledge of what they'll actually become. And there's a ton of other what ifs in this league too. But what we're gonna do is every week switch teams and actually watch them play in the sim and we'll see where even more guys ended up. This one in particular for week one is gonna be a pretty heavy hitter matchup. Now in my what if, I had the Bengals take Justin Jefferson number one overall, which lets them snag Jalen Hurts in the second round. So we're jumping in the fourth quarter here. The Browns are up 28-21. Jalen Hurts at quarterback, Tyreek Hill at wide wide receiver and Justin Jefferson at wide receiver who gets the handoff and only gains a yard. Hertz drops back, throws, looks deep, ooh, dropped. Third down and nine here, they're down by seven. Hertz gonna take the snap here and sacked by Miles Garrett. See that number one overall pick, man. You could argue for the switch, but he's still worth it. So Josh Allen and the Browns come in up by seven with about four minutes left. There's no Nick Chubb on this team, remember, but they do have Tyree Kill and Hunt go with a huge first down. See, this team's still good. With Hill on the outside, Josh Allen at quarterback, you can get away with having Hunt as your number one running back. Oh, and Allen, deep shot. Wow, catches it. Hill with the catch. This offense, is gonna be explosive. This is actually like the pretty fun thing about the what if scenario, is that like the Browns could have taken Josh Allen. That was right there in front of them, but they chose Baker instead and he gets an easy touchdown. They're going up by two scores. Yeah, that's the fun thing about this what if scenario for me is like a lot of these draft swaps that I did are things that could have happened. So we're gonna see in this video how the league would look today under like some different circumstances. And yeah, the Josh Allen led Browns win week one against the Bengals. I think these two teams will see each other in the playoffs because there is a lot of talent on both teams. We barely even got to see Justin Jefferson in this game, but I do think we'll see more of them this season. Week two, jumping in with the Bears versus the Buccaneers. This is our first game seeing Patrick Mahomes on the Bears. Anthony Richardson is also the starting quarterback for the Buccaneers now. This should be a pretty good matchup. So we're jumping in right away at the start of this game because have to see Mahomes on the Bears. The Bears might actually be good now. In 2023, this is a crazy thought. Not, I'm not even gonna like crap on Justin Fields, but Patrick Mahomes is a true game changer. Yet some reason they run the ball three times with him and still get the first down, but you do have Patrick Mahomes, so you might wanna try passing the ball. They're actually down quite a lot right now. They're down by 14, but you got five minutes left to go get two touchdowns, but they are driving. Tyler Lockett is also on the Bears now. That was another one where the Bears took a receiver early. Tyler Lockett was taken in a later round, so did the swap there. So Lockett's now on the Bears. So Mahomes does have a pretty good target on his side. They got four and a half minutes left. They still got about 40 yards to go here. Playing the short game, they do still have DJ Moore too, let's not forget, because this is basically the 2023 roster with the modifications we've made. Mahomes on third and four here. Quick slant to Moore who drops it. So they're gonna have to go for it here uh, down by 14 with under four to go. I mean, they only need four yards for the first down here. I mean, they'll probably, ooh. Wow, he actually caught it. I did not think he was gonna get that. That was a pretty aggressive play on fourth down. And I think they had a guy in like the, the under flat who was definitely wide open for the first down. Mahomes looks, 
and gets Lockett for another first down. They're driving. They got three and a half minutes here. Mahomes drops back on first and goal, rolls out, looks right, and he's got DJ Moore. He's down to the three, rolls out. Oh, he should have just taken it. Oh, but they, oh, he dropped it. DJ Moore is just selling on this drive. Third and goal, 250 left. Down by two scores. Mahomes with the easy touchdown to St. Brown. Not Amon Ross St. Brown, we'll see him later. So with three timeouts left and the two minute warning, they're gonna kick it deep here. Anthony Richardson's on the other side for the Buccaneers. They also do have George Kittle, which was another scenario where they drafted a tight end earlier. George Kittle was drafted later, another swap there. That's kind of like the fun thing with this what if scenario where it's like, we're just moving guys around the league for just easy swaps where it's like, obviously with hindsight, these teams would know, but at the time, who knew that George Kittle would end up being one of the best tight ends in the league? Third and five, I'm sure it'll be another handoff here. Odell Beckham is also on the Buccaneers. I forgot about that, and the sack! Fumble! Whoa, what a chain of events there. They just got gifted the best case scenario. Mahomes comes back on the field, down by seven with two minutes to go. They're already to the 15 yard line. This is like dream scenario for the Bears. Mahomes drops back. Oh, he's getting pressured. Is He gets sacked. Second and 19. So Mahomes back to the 24 now after the loss of nine. Play action. He's got DJ Moore there. They're driving. They gotta get going. They're only, they only got a minute left. They're back to the original line of scrimmage. Mahomes looks and he's got him. They tie the game. Mercedes Lewis with the late touchdown. The Bears could actually be good. But now with 53 seconds left, Anthony Richardson with Odell Beckham Jr. and George Kittle have the space. He's, oh my God, they, they're already almost in field goal range. They might be in field goal range. The Bucks could be low key good this year. Anthony Richardson, I think, should develop, rolls out, wow, and breaks a tackle. Okay, and out of bounds. Chris Godwin, Odell Beckham Jr., Anthony Richardson, and George Kittle. They could be a sleeper pick for the Super Bowl here. Barring anything crazy from happening here, they might get the win. Wow, and the first down. Yeah, they're gonna run this clock down, and I think they're gonna hand Mahomes the L. Now this is where Madden's super weird. They could easily run the ball and call a timeout with 11 seconds left, but they're gonna kick it here. I imagine they're gonna have to get it from not that far out. Yeah, they do, they're up, so that's it. I think that's game. Not the result I was expecting, to be honest, but I also did not realize how good the Bucks were. So this is gonna be the final shot from Mahomes. There's four seconds left. It's gotta be a deep shot here, but there is a very small percentage chance, and yeah, that was that made no sense. He gained eight yards and the game's over. So that's a pretty big win for the Bucks here. And there he is, Aaron Rodgers on the 49ers. You could have honestly thought it was gonna happen like later in his career if he ever left the Packers, which he did and went to the Jets, but this could have happened a long, long time ago. There were some really good 49ers teams in the early 2010s under Jim Harbaugh with Patrick Willis, peak Frank Gore, like they could have been a dynasty with Aaron Rodgers. So we know it's Rodgers over Alex Smith, but on the Giants side, in the 2018 draft, instead of taking Saquon Barkley, they take Lamar Jackson. Jumping in the fourth quarter here, it's second and five, 49ers down by two touchdowns. The 49ers are two and zero, and the Giants are 0 and two. They're driving though, they're in the red zone. Rodgers to Debo for the first down, it's first and goal. I made him like a better, younger version of Rodgers because I do want to see what could have been on a good 49ers team, which they are right now as well. Elijah Mitchell's running the wrong way, but he does get positive yards out of it, and he's down to the one, third and goal from the one. That was actually crazy. He ran backwards for like a solid 10 yards there. They got a long yard to go here. Rodgers drops back quick to Debo, and they get the score. Rodgers to Debo is gonna be another fun combo. So they got about 420 here. They're up by seven. This is Lamar Jackson-led New York Giants team. And I think they gained about four or five. Yeah, five there on that first down run. Now, Saquon's not here anymore. Saquon is on a team we'll see later. I'll actually not spoil that one. Uh, but they do actually have Mike Evans and Amon Ross St. Brown as uh, their wide receivers for the Giants, which is a very big difference from what they have in real life. So the Giants do have a bunch of really good weapons here. I mean, as I mentioned earlier, with a lot of these pretty bad teams, typically, they draft early and they miss on a lot of picks. So 
in our little what-if scenario here, we get to bring some good guys to these teams and pair them up with some really good players and see what happens. Third and 13, the 49ers need a stop here to stay alive. Still have three timeouts. Ooh, they'll hand it off for another loss. So they call timeout. 49ers will get the ball back with about a minute and 50 seconds left to go. So can Aaron Rodgers do it? Down by seven with 154 left. They gotta drive the length of the field here. They got about 70 yards to go and they're starting off strong here, already up to the 44. I think they're gonna just go no, uh, no huddle here. Aaron Rodgers drops back, looks, and he's got Debo again down to the 30. Still no timeout, still running hurry up. I guess, yeah, you would save it for uh, when you're closer to the end zone here. Rodgers drops back, looks right, and he's got him out of bounds. All right, that's pretty good. Definitely thought he went out of bounds there. I'm not sure why they had to call a timeout. 50 seconds left, second and ooh, six, and oh, that's a touchdown. He's got it. Rodgers to Ray Ray McLeod the third. The question will be, did he leave too much time on the clock? I think there's about 40-ish, 45 seconds left. They got Lamar Jackson on the other side with a bunch of weapons, so the game's not over yet. Now, good thing to remember is that there is no Nick Bosa on this defense. He's over in Arizona now, so 49ers definitely down a pretty big weapon here. Lamar drops back, looks, and he's got him down to like the 42, yeah. So they're driving, they got 39 seconds, burn their first time out. Lamar drops back, quick pass, Darren Waller, and gets about six. Lamar, second and four. Will he run? No, quick pass. Oh, and it's picked! Mike Evans dropped it, and it was picked off by the 49ers. Oh, it's a fumble. They're calling it a, oh no, he was down. He was definitely down. I thought it was like a bobble into an interception, but it was a fumble. This I think is definitely gonna get reversed here. Yeah, it's back to the Giants now. I literally thought it was like a bobble into an interception from how it looks from this angle. They're gonna hand it off to Breda, who gets two yards. There you go, there's a timeout, five seconds left. That was a big swing. That could have literally put the 49ers in like a perfect chance to uh, win the game there. So yeah, I think it's about a 52 yard field goal. And he, I think hits it, he hits it, yeah. The Giants pull it off. Another week with a game winning field goal. And that'll do it, the Giants will upset the 49ers and get the first win of the season. That was a nice back and forth game there at the end. I mean, Rodgers left too much time on the clock and uh, gave Lamar the chance to win the game with a field goal, so on to week four. Week number four, it is the Broncos versus Miami Dolphins. It is Justin Herbert, versus Tim Tebow. I literally forgot that I put Tim Tebow in this for a meme. Tim Tebow is actually pretty good. I used one of his like muck cards for like his overall ratings. So I think he's like an 89, but it's Tim Tebow, man. I mean, the whole Tebow time, you had to be there and it was awful to watch, but you had to be there. Jumping in with about four minutes left. The Broncos are up 21 to nine. Tim Tebow must have really been putting in some work on the other side. Justin Herbert, though, on this side, gets sacked. Whoa, he, Randy Gregory, who just got cut today, so that's kind of ironic. Randy Gregory just blew up the play, and he's not even on the team anymore. But Justin Herbert back at it again. Looks, and he's got, oh, O.J. Howard for the touchdown. Down by, I think, six right now. It'll be five with the extra point. But Herbert leading the comeback. I mean, some pretty weak D there. OJ Howard had a ton of space, and they're still in it. There's still a good amount of time left in this game. And does Tim Tebow have his classic late game Tebow time heroics still in him? I mean, they're probably gonna run the ball a lot here, which they have Saquon Barkley, let's not forget, because that was in the 2018 draft, and the Giants took Lamar Jackson, and I don't exactly remember at this point how Barkley got to the Broncos, but he's here now. So Tim Tebow and Saquon Barkley, who would have thought? Hey, look at us. Look at us. Huh? Who would have thought? Not me. Tim Tebow, man, in 2023, something I would not have thought would have been a what if, but as I was going, I was like, I kind of want to see it. And he gets the first down. So they're driving. They got three minutes left. I mean, lots of time here for uh, the Dolphins to get some stops, but they're going to have to get it going. That lefty release is just so weird to look at. Still dropping back and passing. Will he run? And he's sacked. The, the muck card I used for Tim Tebow does have some speed on him, but yeah, that was a pretty costly loss of six there. Dolphins need to stop here. I mean, if they get the stop, it's uh still, pre still a pretty good game. And they get him there. So it's fourth and six. They're kicking the field goal. 41 yard line, does he make it? 
No. Oh, he made it. I thought it was wide. Will Lutz. Good for you. Still a one possession game here for Herbert. Only down by eight. Two minutes left, but only one timeout. They got a ways to go. He drops back, looks deep, and it's picked. That's the game. Patrick Sertan. Wow. Wow. I mean, great coverage, but also just a very underthrown ball. Maybe this will finally end the Tua versus Herbert debate. Well, just realized that last game was actually in week three, so we played two week three games. We're in week five now. It's the Rams versus the Eagles and Dak Prescott versus Jared Goff. So uh, this game's not that close. Jared Goff is running away with it, but Dak here, quick screen. And yeah, they get about four, yeah, three there. I think this game is probably as good as done, but I do want to see these teams play still. So Dak gets the first down here, I think. I mean, we'll see if Dak has any like late magic in him, but down by 17 with this little time left, Pukunakua gets the first down. So good to see he's still good in this world too. An important thing to remember is there is no Cooper Cup on this team. So Dak is gonna be probably trying to, well, I was gonna say look for Puka, but and Prescott is sacked again. Dak is having a go on it. Sacked twice and three times on fourth down nonetheless. Dak got sacked three times on this drive. That's, that's not what you want. And here comes Jared Goff and the Eagles. But yeah, I remember when they got drafted, like the whole like Carson Wentz and Jared Goff thing was really interesting because Wentz came out and took this Eagles team damn near to a Super Bowl before he got hurt. But yeah, they were both pretty good at the start of their careers. I think the thing with Goff that's actually interesting is that he started out a bit slower and it was all kind of thought to be like Sean McVay doing all the work. But, you know, now with the Lions, he's really taken off and he's kind of become the player that we thought he could be. But in this game, the Eagles are pulling away. And Dak is sacked again. Uh, I think this game's over. Week five now. Micah Parsons and Derek Carr are on the Jags and Russell Wilson's on the Colts. So we got about five minutes left. The Jags are down by a lot. We I simmed a little too far here, but Derek Carr is quarterback and they get about seven yards, which is good, so I can actually tell you about this team. Derek Carr is the quarterback. Christian McCaffrey is the running back. Micah Parsons on defense for the Jags. I think that's about it, unless I'm forgetting something. But Derek Carr and uh, Christian McCaffrey are really good, and Carr should just run it. Should just run it. First and goal at the one now. He should have easily had that touchdown way earlier. Third and goal from the one, down by two, down by a lot. I was gonna say two scores, three scores. I don't even know at this point. And Carr misses him again. Carr is missing wildly on this drive, and he gets it. Christian Kirk, he gets the touchdown. Jags going for the onside kick here, and not even close. And yeah, this Colts team is, the only real change is really Russell Wilson. Doesn't look like Jonathan Taylor, so I'm not sure. Le oh, it's Leonard Fournette. Did I do that? Did I do that? <laughs> I don't remember if I did that, or if they did that when I removed uh, Fournette from the Jags. So it's third and six here from the 38. I believe this would already be field goal range. Jags do need a stop. Russ is, oh, I thought he was gonna get sacked. No, it's a drop. And yeah, here we go, game on the line. Uh, down by 13 here, so still, I think it's over, but can they get the first? And they don't. Back to the Colts. This game's over. Week number seven, jumping in with the Bills and Patriots. The Bills are four and two, Pats 0 oh and six. Sam Darnold is the quarterback, and that's a really good play on second and 19. Uh, Sam Darnold's the quarterback for the Bills since Josh Allen got taken by the Browns and the Jets didn't take Sam Darnold. We'll get to the Jets pretty soon, I think. Four and two for the Bills. I mean, the Bills do have a talented team. Uh, Darnold is a decent quarterback. I mean, I think at this point of his career, backup at best, but still serviceable. But I do think a big uh, part to this four and two start for the Bills is the guy you see at the bottom of the screen there. Devontae Adams. I mean, they drafted, oh, big shot here. Oh, and almost caught it too off the deflection. Jarvis Landry's on this team apparently. I think he was a free agent though. I do think uh, Devontae Adams is a big reason for this four and two start. I mean, they drafted Sammy Watkins with the original pick. Sammy Watkins had an okay career. I mean, he's been around for a while. I think he won a Super Bowl with the Chiefs if I remember correctly, but he's no Devontae Adams, man. I mean, Devonte, is he the best receiver in the league? If not number one, because of Justin Jefferson. But Devonte, I think is easily top three for me personally. A few of the games, obviously we've jumped in at the end. Some of them we're gonna mix it up. We'll jump into the beginning just to see before the games get out of hand. Third and six from the eight, Devonte in the slot. Darnold drops back, looks, 
and it's caught short of the line there. So it's fourth and one from the three. I hope they go for it. I don't want to see a field. Oh, come on, man. Now on the other side, Kenny Pickett is the starting quarterback. So just for clarity too, I did all like the roster stuff a few days ago. I don't think I put Kenny Pickett on the Patriots. I'm not sure how he's here. I think the only move I did in our what if scenario was drafting AJ Brown instead of Nikhil Harry. That still remains as a very positive improvement for this team. Kenny Pickett instead of Mac Jones, I would say is an upgrade. They're both like game manager type guys, but I don't think either really pushes the needle. So yeah, third and inches from the 15 here. The Bills have only managed field goals all game. The Patriots are driving. Uh, can pick it, get it done here, get the first, and it's picked, and it's picked. I think that's 58, so that's Matt Milano. Yeah, no, he's not getting caught. That's a pick six. All right, so the Patriots got it back, down by five with 57 seconds left at their own 20. The game's still alive, not gonna lie. And, ooh, is that, yeah, he got the first down there. That's pretty good. Pickett drops back, looks, and he's got Smith Schuster again. Not using DK Metcalf, who's here. Oh, shoot, I said AJ Brown here. It's DK Metcalf on this team, not AJ Brown. Sorry, I got my guys confused. Four seconds left. So they're gonna have one try here. It is a full Hail, Hail Mary shot in real life. I do think, because this is Madden, I'm expecting like a check down. Oh no, he's gonna get it to the end zone. And a flag. Ooh. Pass interference, defense. They're gonna get a shot with no time on the clock from the one. What do they do here? And he's got it! Wow, Kenny Pickett shutting me up for all the shit I was talking. Wow, and that's game. You know what? Good for Kenny Pickett. I'm happy I watched it. Now this is a matchup I have been waiting for all season. Jamarcus Russell versus Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow, has Megatron. That's gonna be fun to watch. Jamarcus Russell has Josh Jacobs as his running back and Stefan Diggs as his wide receiver one. This is gonna be a great matchup. I'm looking forward to this one. Third and two from the 31, Burrow pitches it to Gibbs, who should have the first down and way more. Drive stays alive here. They're up to the 43 now. This would be the best team that Calvin Johnson would be on. But I mean, the other number nine who was throwing the ball, Matt Stafford, was really great, obviously. Led some of the most impressive comebacks I've ever seen in my life. Joe Burrow is really good too. I think he is like one of this generation's best quarterbacks. Third and 15 from the 33, Burrow drops back, looks wide open, down to the three. That was a great pass by Burrow. Still no completions to Calvin Johnson here. I really want to see it. First and goal from the three. Burrow drops back, looks quick pass, and it's Laporta again. No Calvin Johnson needed on that drive. And here's Jamarcus Russell, 340 left from their own 25, down by four. Russell drops back, looks, Got a man, got Hunter Renfro for about seven there, yeah. Russell to me is one of those like truly what if guys, like in that same kind of era of like Tim Tebow and Johnny Manziel, all these guys who were super fun to watch in college, but then never panned out in the, in the NFL. It's gonna be interesting to see what they can do here. I mean, both teams coming into this game with winning records, but yeah, Russell's got two minutes here, second and three, gets the easy first down, they're driving. Second and four, minute and 15 left, Russell looks sideline and dropped by Stefan Diggs. It was a good pass, but he was in double coverage. It was definitely that second hit that knocked it loose. 113 left, third and four, they need to get this here and well out of bounds by Russell. I mean, that was kind of always his thing, was he had the big arm, but the accuracy wasn't always there. There was also like the work ethic that wasn't there, but you know, in Madden, I think we're good on that part. So fourth and four here, minute and 10 left. Can they get it here? Quick pass, wide open, easy first down. Drives alive with a minute to go. From the 28, 50 seconds left, Russell looks deep and he's got him. Michael Mayer, I think? Timeout, it's a first and goal, 44 seconds left from the four. They should be able to get this here. Stefan Diggs, top of the screen. Hunter Renfro in motion. Russell drops, wide open touchdown. And we have a lead. But Joe Burrow on the other side, can he get them in range for a field goal? They gotta go about 40-ish yards here. Burrow drops in motion a little bit, looks sideline and gets it to Calvin Johnson. Haven't seen much of Calvin Johnson outside that catch, but it's second and one. Burrow looks all the time in the world. 
rolls back, wide open. Laporta again, already in field goal range. They were targeting the 37, already got it to the 36. They might have a chance to just go for the win here. Burrow running backwards, don't know what he's doing. And here we go from the 28 yard line, five seconds left. Can they get the field goal to tie it? Should be money, and he makes it. We got a tie game, 31 all. We're going to overtime. I mean, I had a feeling with both of these teams' uh, talent, this is gonna be a good matchup. Third and 13 after the holding from the 25. He's got Calvin Johnson in the slot. Burrow steps up, looks, and another catch on Laporta. Who needs Calvin Johnson when Sam Laporta's on the team, apparently? Game's on the line here for the Raiders. They need a big play, but I think they're gonna hand it off. Burrow, yeah, hand off to Gibbs. They gain another two yards there, so it's fourth and two from the 29. I think the Lions will be able to get a pretty easy chip shot field goal from here. And here's the field goal to win. And he's got it. Money, super easy from that distance. And yeah, the Lions and Joe Burrow pull it out over Jamarcus Russell and the Raiders. That was a great game uh, overall, back and forth. You saw a nice little comeback. Saw Joe Burrow get a nice little overtime win. I mean, but yeah, that was a great game. All right, we are in week 16 to see this man, Trevor Lawrence. Honestly, not that great of a season, if I'm gonna be honest, but also Robert Griffin the third tier too. So this will be the last game of the regular season that we sim. Honestly, the rest of the teams that we haven't seen so far, they didn't really have any interesting moves that were worth watching. I simmed a few of them, the games are boring. It's been no secret on this channel that I'm a Jets fan, so seeing the tank, you know, actually come through and we have Trevor Lawrence, that's amazing. For a long time in that bleak, bleak season, really thought this was gonna be the guy who would save this franchise. It turned out to be Zach Wilson. He turned out to not save the franchise. In this world, we still have Brees Hall. Dalvin Cook's not on this team anymore. Huge run from Brees to start. Looking like real Brees Hall. That's great to see. Uh, and I did see that number 87 on that line there, the Jets traded for Travis Kelsey, I think. I doubt he was released, because why would he be? It's the first time I'm jumping in with the Jets this season, so I think that was a CPU move. Not gonna complain about that. But from the 39 here, it's 39. Lawrence drops back. Looks caught by Garrett Wilson. So that's a first down, drive stays alive. First and 10 from the 28 here. Not a handoff to Hall, I thought it was gonna be. Lawrence running all the way backwards and he's sacked. Not a great look there. Uh, Montez Sweat with the sack. Second and 21 here is Lawrence. Oh, for a second I thought Lawrence was hurt and that was gonna be real sad as a Jets fan, but yeah, he ran, turned right back into that sack and got crushed. Third and 17 here from the 35. Lawrence drops back. Screen past the hall, gets about maybe five yards on that. Drive started out pretty hot there, but definitely fell apart near the end with that sack. And here's RG3. I mean, super electric player when he came out of Baylor. He was honestly like the Lamar Jackson, Kyler Murray, Justin Fields kind of prototype to like what's in the league right now. But unfortunately he couldn't stay healthy. Second and nine, RG3 drops back and he's running. I mean, he's fast. He has every single like scrambling attribute you would look for. Again, another guy who I built off of one of his uh, muck cards. Second and eight from midfield, starting off the second quarter. We got a man in motion. RG3 takes a snap and, ooh, and a fumble by Quinnen and JFM with the recovery. That is a huge momentum shift. Gotta get a touchdown on this drive. Can't get another field goal. From the 15, first and 10, Lawrence in the shotgun, drops back, looks, and he's picked. Oof, wow, back and forth game on the turnovers here. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know if this is an unpopular opinion. I think the commander's jerseys are kinda cool. Third and four here from the 43, they got two minutes left to go. Lawrence, looks, and wow, it is pulled in. That, that's Kelsey, yeah. Third and goal here from the seven, 38 seconds left. Need a touchdown and a two point conversion. Lawrence running the wrong way and throws it away. Fourth and goal. And game's on the line here. They got a score, it's uh, over. Lawrence drops back, quick pass. He's got Lazard for the touchdown. Wow, clutch. Yeah, he had him wide open right down the middle. Both feet in for sure. They still need the two point conversion here. Lawrence drops back, quick pass, and he's got it to Wilson. They tie the game up with 30 seconds left. That was an impressive drive. And the Jets will get the opening possession of overtime here after tying it up. Starting at their own 24 here, Lawrence with the play action, rolls to the right, cross body to Garrett Wilson. The double lines in the field has thrown me off, but here we are, third and one from their own 34. Would probably just hand it off here to Brees and just get the easy first down. 
They do, and he gets much more. Still going. Got all the way to the 46 on that. That was a great run by Brees. They needed one, and Brees just got like 15. So second and nine here from their own 47. Kelsey motions out wide to the right. Lawrence drops back, rolls to the right, and connects with Garrett Wilson for a nice gain down to the 37. Yeah, Lawrence started out pretty slow in this game, it seems, but really uh, found his way in the fourth quarter and uh, overtime now. Third and 11 now from the 38. Only managed to lose one yard there, so that's still good. Still in field goal range. Lawrence drops back. Lots of time. Looks. He's got Garrett Wilson for the touchdown. The walk-off. Jets fans. Whoever watching this video, I, I know the feeling. Trevor Lawrence leads the comeback for the walk-off win. Jets win 20 to 14. And we are at the playoffs. So let's take a look at the league stats here. Looks like Mahomes led the league with 4,600 yards passing for the Bears. Didn't see them in the playoffs though, so clearly didn't help that much. Tua had a really nice year, 4,300 yards, 34 and six. Lawrence is up here, 4,000 yards, 26 and 20. Rodgers, almost 4,000, 36 and seven. Bryce Young and uh, CJ Stroud flip, so he's uh, near the bottom of the league. Uh, Jamarcus Russell, 3,400 yards, 33 touchdowns and six picks. So who led the league overall? Yeah, Jalen Hurts, Joe Burrow, and Rodgers are the top three. Three picks for those guys too. Justin Field, man, 27 interceptions. He was really going for that Jameis Winston uh, stat line. Josh Allen had none. Wow. Rushing, we'll look at the guys who are in new homes. 1,600 yards for McCaffrey. Barkley with 1,514. Receiving, Cooper Cup had a great year with 1,500 yards and 14 touchdowns. Devontae Adams had a good year in Buffalo with Sam Darnold. St. Brown had a great year with uh, Lamar with 15 touchdowns. Tyree Kill, only 1,000 yards and uh, nine touchdowns with Josh Allen. Defensively, Von Miller had 27 and a half sacks, Jesus. Micah Parsons with the Jags though did have 19. Donald had 15 and a half with the Texans. Bosa had 15. Hutchinson with the Jags had 14 and a half. Trayvon Walker had seven and a half with the Lions. And the league MVP with the Bengals is Jalen Hurts. Josh Allen was up here with the Browns. And yeah, coach of the year is Dan Campbell with the Lions. Joe Burrow and uh, Megatron definitely helped out there. We'll take a quick look at the season standings. The Browns with Josh Allen uh, won the AFC North with 14 and three record, which is really crazy. AFC South, we have the Jags at 10 and seven and the Colts at nine and eight. In the AFC East, the Jets made the playoffs at 11 and six with Trevor Lawrence. AFC West, you have the Chargers and Raiders both going 13 and four. For whatever reason, I thought Russell had a bad year, but the Raiders actually really good, 13 and four. NFC North, Lions 14 and three. Burrow and Calvin Johnson, man. Bears only went eight and nine though. I mean, defensively they're a pretty weak team, but you thought with Mahomes, maybe they stood a real chance, but turned out to be not. Falcons at 12 and five, but Zach Wilson's their quarterback. So 12 wins for them is crazy. Panthers made it at 10 and seven. So that swap for CJ Stroud and Bryce Young definitely paid off for them. Cowboys at 10 and seven make the playoffs. And the Aaron Rodgers led 49ers uh, 10 and seven win the NFC West. Rams also make the playoffs from here. So let's go uh, jump into some games and we'll see who makes it to the Super Bowl. So for the wild card round, we're just gonna watch these games in the uh, Super Sim. If they're close at the end, we'll jump in and see what happens. But right now Tampa's up 6-3 and the Falcons get a touchdown. Two touchdowns up 17 to 14 now. Oh, and I tried to stop it, but I think the Falcons won here at 20 to 14. Yeah, Falcons 20 to 14 here. We didn't get to see it, but at least we'll get to see him in the next round since we haven't seen the Zach Wilson led uh, Falcons team somehow is amazing. AFC side, we have the Chargers and Colts who are already tied 7-7, much uh, quicker scoring here. So Chargers have Tua and uh, the Colts have Russ. Chargers up 17 to 14 here going into the fourth. Gonna make sure to stop it here early. So it's 21-20 with 3.05 left. So yeah, obviously going for it here on fourth and seven from their own 28, only a minute and 20 left, no timeout. So if they don't get it here, game's definitely over, but they do convert, get it up to about the 47 yard line. Drops back on third and 16, gotta gain something here. And sacked again, wow, no timeouts too. 16 seconds left, fourth and 22. This is going about as bad as it could for the Chargers here. Tua, ooh, on the sideline, does he get it? He caught it. We don't get a replay there. Clock stopped, eight seconds left. Tua, looks like he's going for it all. Doesn't reach the end zone. Ball hits the ground with one second left. There's still a chance. Not a very high chance, but there's a chance. 
Got plenty of time on the run, poor throw, and it hits the ground, yeah. So the uh, Colts and Russell Wilson are gonna move on. Colts get the win here. We got Rams and Cowboys here. It's Prescott versus Dan Jones. So Dak, Dak actually gets to go against his former team here. We're 10-3, 17-3 going into the fourth, 27-10. Yeah, this is over. This, this is Jover. And yeah, Rams take this easy, 34-10 final score. Dak gets the win against his former team. They're moving on. So we got Vegas and the Jags here. Jamarcus Russell versus Derek Carr. Lighting the world up here. It's 7-3 in the second and just hit halftime. Jags up 10-7 now. Approaching the fourth quarter, 17-7, Jags on top. All right, so we're gonna jump in here. So the Raiders are down by three, 218 left, three timeouts at the 48. Terrible pass by Russell to start. With the timeouts and the two minute warning, they got, they got some uh, time to work with here. Third and 10 here, Russell drops back, full blitz. It was the screen pass on third and 10, and Russell just got crushed by the blitz. Fourth and 10 here, they're gonna go for it. I thought they might punt and, uh, play with the two minute warning and timeouts, but you know, in the playoffs, you really don't want to take that chance. And Russell sacked. Ooh, that's, that's crushing, but it's Micah Parsons who gets the sack. Wow. So that move really paid off there for the Jags. Yeah, the guy, there was, could not keep up with the block there on uh, Micah Parsons. And Aiden Hutchinson's on the other side too. So that is a lethal pass rush. Third and 10 here after the two minute warning. Uh, Raiders only use one timeout, so they just need to stop here and they can get back. Ooh, and Ridley gets the first down. I think that's game, yeah, with two timeouts. And yeah, that's game. The Jags beat the Raiders of uh, 17 to 14. Derek Carr pulls it out against uh, Jamarcus Russell. So we have the Panthers and 49ers here. Panthers are up 14-7 already. It's CJ Stroud versus Aaron Rodgers. 21-7 here in the third. 24-7 here, and yeah, kind of as I expected. I mean, nothing really to watch here. It's 31-14 Panthers, a uh, minute left, and yeah, that's game. I'm not gonna lie, I was pulling for the 49ers in this just to see Aaron Rodgers win, but it is pretty cool to see, you know, CJ Stroud for the Panthers, you know, winning a wild card game in his rookie year. It's almost like the Panthers should have drafted him. And jumping in to the final game of the wild card weekend, we have the Jets and Bengals. Trevor Lawrence versus Jalen Hurts. And we'll jump in the sim here. Jets up seven nothing early. We're going into the second, 14 nothing Jets. Approaching the halftime here, 21 nothing Jets. 21, three Jets in the third, 28, three, 35. Jets are pulling away here, 42 to 10. Wow. Yeah, I mean, uh, we don't, we don't got to jump into this one. This one was long, long over. And Trevor Lawrence leads the Jets to a 45 to 10 victory in the wild card. That is a huge, huge win for the Jets. Well, we're now at the championship week because I just recorded all of the divisional round, all four games, and the file corrupted, so that's gone. Can't fix that. So just taking a quick look around the league, the Browns won 21-17 against uh, the Colts. Jets beat the Jags 28-14. Lions beat the Panthers by three. So that was a good game that you can't watch, unfortunately. And the Falcons blew out the Rams. This was not even close. But in the championship round, we have the Lions with Joe Burrow against the Falcons with Zach Wilson that are apparently amazing. And the Jets with Trevor Lawrence against Josh Allen and the Browns. Now this is honestly a great matchup. I mean, Allen versus Lawrence with both of these teams being pretty stacked, this will be a fun game. Jumping in the sim here, we are, oh, not scoreless, seven nothing Jets, seven seven. Going into halftime here, close to halftime. Jets up 10-7 to go to the third. Going into the fourth, 24-7 Jets. Browns are making a comeback here. It's real close. So there's 48 seconds left. Oh, the Browns have no timeouts. So the game is over. And yeah, they win 27 to 21 against the Browns led by Josh Allen. I mean, the Browns in the AFC, both of these teams, honestly, in the AFC championship is just crazy. But yeah, 27, 21. And here we are, the Falcons and the Lions. The Falcons have been blowing everyone out this entire playoffs, but they're the ones getting blown out here. Not even getting a touchdown into the third. 24-3 Lions. I, they finally might have met their match. 24-10. Will they? Okay, okay. So yeah, they can run about 60, 70 seconds off the clock. So they might be able to get the ball back one more time. It's not looking good for the Falcons, but they have been blowing everyone out in the playoffs. So maybe they have an amazing offense that we haven't seen yet. <laughs> Led by Zach Wilson is just the funniest thing to me, but hey, they're here. They had an amazing record in the regular season too. 
Wilson drops back, rolling back. Cross field to nobody. Oh, also the thing with this Falcons is I put Julio Jones back on this team just because he was, he was in free agency and I want to see him on the Falcons, to be honest. Wilson rolls up and gets sacked. That is the game. And here we are in the Super Bowl. It's the Lions and Joe Burrow versus the Jets and Trevor Lawrence. Look, I'm a Jets fan. I promise you, I did not rig this. I know it probably seems like it's rigged. There's literally no way I think I could rig it because everything's just simulations. But I am really happy to see this because I feel like the Lions really deserve a Super Bowl and the Jets do as well. So I think that like either way, I'm gonna be happy here because this is all made up land anyway. Like Joe Burrow, obviously not in the Lions. Trevor Lawrence ship has sailed a long time ago for the Jets. So I think this will just be a fun game. I mean, we'll definitely watch a little bit more of this one instead of the way we watch the other ones just in the sim, but we'll check it out and see what happens. The Lions are rocking the classic 1981 home uniforms today. Joe Burrow had an amazing season. Almost 4,000 yards passing, 42 touchdowns, and three picks. Second and three here from their own 25. Calvin Johnson in motion gets the handoff, taken down by CJ Mosley. And now it's third and five from their own 24. Burrow drops back, and he, yeah, has the first down there. First and 10 from their own 33, fakes the handoff to Gibbs. Fires deep and nearly picked. It was off his receiver's hands, and I think off the Jets uh, DB's hands as well. So we got second and 10 here. It's a fake to Gibbs. Burrow deep down the right side and caught. And still going by Campbell over Sauce, and Amos pushes him out. Huge gain for the Lions there. He had all day to throw there. And beautiful pass, honestly, working the sideline. Oh, Sauce just missed the tackle. Third and 10 from the 14 here. Burrow drops back. Quick pass to the right, and it's dropped by Calvin Johnson. I think broken up by Amos there. So the Lions will settle for three and take the early lead here in the Super Bowl. And here comes Trevor Lawrence and the Jets offense. Will they be able to match with opening drive points? 4,000 yards, 26 touchdowns, and 20 picks for Lawrence. The 20 picks feels a little high for him, just like in general, but I mean, it's a simulation of a video game, so what's to say is real life when none of this is real life? So from their own 38 on third and seven, Lawrence is gonna take the snap, drop back to the right. He's got, I think that's Travis Kelsey wide open. Look, I wish I could say that Travis Kelsey was like my decision, because I would love to put him on the Jets, but that was straight up CPU. I left trading. And I left all that on, left it on auto since I was going to be controlling so many teams. It was going to be impossible to keep track of what I was doing. All that stuff was on auto for every team. So any of the trades and stuff they made was all on them. Anyway, here's a handoff to Breeze for about six, I think. Yep. Second and four. Lawrence takes a snap. Looks like he may run. No, deep pass here. And broken up. Third and four here. I think we're definitely out of uh, field goal range. So oh, does, is it a design run for Lawrence? Yeah, I think it was. Jets lose a yard there. I think they're out of field goal range. So I think they're just going to go for the... Oh, no, they're going to go for the punt. I was going to say go for the field goal. Or sorry, vice versa. I thought they were going to go for the punt. They're going for the field goal. And Zerline here. Is he going to make it? Looks, yeah, wide right. We'll stick in the super sim for a little bit. Lines up 10-7. And going into the fourth. Second and 13 from the 36. Seven, Lawrence drops back and he finds Garrett Wilson for a big game there. I think that was over CJ. Yeah, that was over CJ uh, Gardner Johnson. So Lawrence here from the 20, first and 10, about five and a half to go. Drops back, rolls out, and finds McCole Hardman for a gain of nine there. Jets moving the ball nicely here down to the 11. They're only down by three with about four minutes left to go in the game, which is all you can kind of hope for as a fan. Lawrence rolls out right here. Throws it to Brees. Brees trucks air and gets it down to the three. Might be a handoff here. Yeah, that's the right play. And Brees walks it in easily. Jets take the lead. And here comes Joe Burrow with just over four minutes to go from their own 25. Can he lead the comeback to win the Super Bowl? Burrow drops back and swings it out to Gibbs. Gibbs has all the space in the world. And DJ Reed and uh, Jordan Whitehead bring him down there. Lions are moving quick down to the 46 already. They do have to be cognizant of the clock here because they only got about 3.30 left. Not much urgency in the offense there, but first and 10 from their own 46, Burrow drops back and he's just gonna run straight up. Okay, that was a pretty good run. Five yards on, fir on first down there. Third and five now, down by four. Burrow takes the snap all the time in the world getting pressured by jfm and he just throws it away so at this point in the game i think they do go for it here on fourth down i'd be very surprised if they didn't 
Oh, they're going to punt. So they'll punt the ball with about three minutes left. They do have three timeouts. Thought that might have been a fake. Oh, and that's going to be a penalty for running into the kicker for sure. Yeah, he like sort of like double clutched the ball as if it was like a bad catch, which I didn't even think was possible in this game. The kick took like a weird amount of time to like actually get off. But the, yeah, penalty regardless, Burrow back on the field. Terrible snare for the Jets. Broken tackle by Gibbs gets crushed by Quinn and Williams. Gain of six on the play, down to the 28, 230 left. Burrow takes a snap and drops back. Quick pass, coming out of two minute warning here. Burrow, quick drop, tries to get it to Johnson, but it's broken up by DJ Reed. Third and 10 now, minute 50 to go. Burrow, lots of time, gets pressured, and he fumbles. Jameer Gibbs saves it. Quinn Williams just comes in full on sack. Definitely not a chance that he was down, but the Lions are able to recover it. Fourth and 21 now with a minute 29. They have a long ways to go here. Play action, I don't know if it was the move, but Burrow rolls out, uses the sideline, and it's a touchdown. Laporta, wow, that's clutch. Laporta is having the playoffs of a career here. Yeah, just a breakdown in coverage. Jets had two guys on like the flat. And Laporta just went right over and just easy walk in touchdown there. And yeah, extra points good. Jets are down by three. So they do have the option for the field goal, but only a minute and 20 to go. Three timeouts. It's still going to be a challenge for them. This has been a great Super Bowl so far. Real close game at, uh, right down to the end here. Jets do have a good amount of time to get into field goal range here, but they do want to get themselves a nice safe field goal. And he's getting blitzed, pressured, and he's sacked. They lost a yard on that play. Third and 10 now from the 22 with a minute and 10 to go. Lawrence takes the snap, uh-oh, tons of pressure, and throws it away. The pressure got to Lawrence there. And this is it for the Jets. Lions get a stop here, and they're Super Bowl champions. Lawrence takes the snap, quick pass, wide open to McCole Hardman. Lawrence takes the snap, finds Brees Hall, needs to get out of bounds there. That They, they take their second time out. This is going to be tough for them now to get good yardage and also kill the clock. Lawrence, second and two. Quick pass, Travis Kelsey, and he's down to about the 32 yard line. They gotta get up and clock it. They're not gonna clock it, just running hurry up. They're in field goal range for sure. First and 10 from the 32, 15 seconds left. Lawrence, quick pass, and broken up. I think they're gonna go for the handoff here. Yeah, in real life, they probably would take one more chance, but I think they'll take their sure yardage. They're down to the 27. So yeah, here it is, Zerline to tie the Super Bowl with five seconds left. Here's the snap, the kick, and it's good. We have a tie game. We're going to overtime in the Super Bowl. Wow, this has been a really nice game so far. We're nice and back and forth. So Lions won the toss. They get the ball first in overtime. Joe Burrow has a chance to be a hero here. Pretty tight game in overall yards. I think the Lions were at 315. The Jets like 287 there. Burrow takes a snap on first down. Loads of time. Deep shot here. And he's got him. That's a walk off. The Lions have won the Super Bowl. He beats Sauce Gardner. Wow, that's a clutch play from Burrow. Oh, I forgot they changed the overtime rules. The Jets still have a chance here. Completely forgot because we have not had playoff football since then. But Lawrence finds Wilson on the left side. He gets a nice gain out of it. Down to the 41 already. Just when they thought he was dead, they pull him back in. It's Lawrence's turn to try to be clutch here. He's going to take the snap on first down. Bunch of time underneath to Garrett Wilson who breaks a tackle, breaks a few tackles. Only gets about four there, but they're at the, their own 44 now. Time definitely not a factor here. They got about five minutes to go. They only got a score. That's what the aim is. Lawrence, quick pass to Wilson. Gains about two more yards there. Third and four from their own 46. The blitz, Lawrence breaks it. Ooh, and it's broken up. That was almost really clutched by him. I thought the sack was for sure there. He breaks out of the sack. Tried to find Hardman, but it was dropped. So now it comes down to this. Fourth and four to keep the Super Bowl alive. He finds, oh, he found Lazard, but it was short. And that's the game. The Lions have won the Super Bowl. That was a terrible route. That was not even close to the first down yardage. And the Lions are Super Bowl champions, 24 to 17 against the Jets. And Joe Burrow is bringing the Lombardi Trophy back to Detroit. Surely a Super Bowl MVP while he's at it too. That's gonna do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to let me know in the comments how your team did. And yeah, we just hit 10,000 subscribers and I'm really appreciative of everyone who watches this. And I got so many more ideas for videos that I'm really excited to make. And yeah, I guess our next goal is 20K. So make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you guys soon. Be good people.